lesson with you this afternoon is found mostly in 2 Timothy in chapter 3. And it's just going to talk a few minutes with you about what lies ahead, things that we're already seeing and things that will be. I'll read these verses with you in 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 7. Paul said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of of the truth. What lies ahead? For we have seen some of this, you know, time to time, uh, probably all of our lives, you know, but now it seems to be just totally widespread all over the, the United States, all over the world, really. What, what are, you know, is going to happen? Uh, we know that we want to see peace. They talk about peace. We, we like to think there will be prosperity, but will it be prosperity or adversity? What is to be the next thing that will happen in these last days? Well, number one, there will be widespread apostasy. Uh, the Bible, he said, some shall depart from the faith in 1 Timothy 4.1. And he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. When it talks about departing from the faith, in the article, the is talking about this Bible. It's talking about departing from the truths of this that's taught in God's Word. And we see that, as we mentioned some this morning, how there's all kinds of churches and cults and things that sprung up because, you know, if uh, they're not going to stand with the truth of God's word or maybe misunderstanding uh, some verses, so they start their own group and they, all, they kind of base everything on what that, those few verses teach. Uh, Timothy, Paul said to Timothy, they will not endure sound doctrine. Uh, what we're teaching in our Sunday schools to the junior highs and up, most people don't want to hear that. They, they, they just, uh, it's too hard, you know, and it is sound doctrine. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3, he said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching, itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned in, unto fables. There will be many false prophets. Uh, Matthew talked about that. And the Lord himself said in Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall rise, arise and shall deceive many. Well, that's been going on for quite a while, but it's, it's getting more widespread. Also, the sodomite conditions will be open, more open. Uh, used to be a couple of countries in the world that I knew of as a younger man 
that that uh, had uh, free love, they called it, where you live with each other first before you see if you want to marry. And uh, then sodomite uh, conditions were bad in these two countries. Well, sad to say, this country is just exactly like that. those two countries were back when I was probably about 21 or two years old, a long time ago. And that's the way it is right here in this country. Uh, when uh, in the days of the book of Genesis, when Moses wrote about what was before him, the days of Noah, you can turn to Genesis 6 if you like, and, uh, you know, that talks about how the earth was there then. In ver chapter 6, verse 11, Genesis verse 11 and 12 said, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. In verse 5, says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Everything today, uh, you know, is a lot, of, a lot of good things have been invented and, and brought up for good use, but the, because of the uh, evilness that prevails, a great number of those things have been turned to be used for evil rather than good. And uh, that's why it was, of course, back in the days of uh, first creation, you know. Uh, Luke tells us as it was in verse seven, chapter 17, verse 26, as it was in the days of Noah, so, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. That's the way it was. What we just read in Genesis be in the days of Noah. Uh, violence, wickedness, only given to self, imaginations, what I want pleases me, fulfillment of the lust of the flesh, marriage, given in marriage, divorce was nothing. Same, it's like reading a, a newspaper, that's the way it is today as it was in the days of Lot. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, it's almost openly talked about. I don't, of course, like, I think I told you this, but I don't have no TV right now. I put mine on pause because the, the boys were just using it for Xbox and Netflix, something like that. So I just put, put I don't even know what's going on. Uh, I know it's not good, but from what I hear, like if I turn the radio, I don't listen to it a little while, I don't hear much good. I, I hear a uh, lot of advertisements, what they call uh, uh, homosexual lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle, it's a sin. It's a, a, and you're not naturally born that way. That's a choice. That's something that you choose, a person chooses to be like that. And that, in fact, they, you know, you can use a, anything you want to kind of cover it up, might sugarcoat it as to whatever you want, but it's a sin before Almighty God. And that's the way it is in this country. It, uh, it's already, our government is pushing for the whole United States to recognize uh, marriages in that and of course I got my own opinion that when that happens we may hear the trumpet pretty quick then you know also there would be persecution we've been blessed in this United States all of my life uh, about the biggest thing for persecution would be backbiting this is not what it's talking about we got a we have people that uh, would love to do away with the church. I remember when uh, Al Gore ran for, as a candidate, was trying to become a candidate to be the president, 
one of the statements he made was fundamental Christian was in the way. They were the problem. Well, we're not the problem. We're the only hope for this country not falling completely. Uh, the, the, without you, the light goes out. When Christians are not here, when the calling out's taken, you, they haven't seen anything yet. But you and I could see persecution. Like Brother Don Warren used to say to me, what makes you and I think we're better than Christians in China or some other nation that was doing good and then suddenly certain governments took hold and they started killing them. Who are we? We're, we're God's people. Uh, Matthew 24. Again, this is Jesus talking. And he, he's talked about us being hated. By, of all the nations for his name's sake. He said, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. In other words, he said in verse Mark 13 and 9, they will be, de be delivered up to councils and kingdoms and before kings and rulers he said that but take heed to yourselves for they shall deliver you up to councils and, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake and you shall shall be uh, in other words shall, the, for his testimony uh, against them there will be famines I think, uh, you know, already, you know, there's a, a real uh, shortage of corn. I don't know if you know about all this, but there's a real shortage of corn, and corn is used in a lot of things. So food's supposed to really go up now. Uh, we're at the end of time, and the Bible talks about famines and pestilence and earthquakes and wars. Uh, Whenever we begin to uh, have a shortage, well, if you notice in our country, just to give you a little minute way of looking at it, in our state, if, uh, if the economy is bad, there's more stealing and murder, robbing at that point in time. The economy is really doing good, it's less in a way of saying that you let us have real shortage of foods, you'll see a whole lot more problems, fightings, wars, troubles everywhere. Uh, Matthew 24, 6, he said, You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The nation, in verse 7, he said, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in di divers different places. All, all of these, he said in verse 8, are the beginning of sorrows. I, I'm not. I'm not saying any of this to cause you to feel downcast, but to know that we're closer to the coming of the Lord than we were yesterday, and these things begin to really show forth more. You'll know we're, the trumpet's going to sound pretty soon. When I was a kid, I guess about nine or ten, I never got to go to movies much. My uncle and, and uh, his family would go almost every Saturday. Uh, but I went a time or two, and it would have a preview of the next week's, what they were going to show the next week. They'd have little short pre previews of it. That's what we'll see, a preview of what it's going to be like, really like, 
right after the rapture, the next week, the next day. Uh, not going to be good. But at the end, before Christ comes, there'll be a spiritual coldness. And uh, verse 12, he said, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You know what wax is like, don't you? When it's hot, runs. I mean, it just melted down. It runs all over. It gets cold. Can't work with it. And that's why he's talking about the love of many will be like that. It'll, where it was a time, for example, the church of Ephesus was a really a church full of love for the Lord and was evident, but he said that it had grown cold toward him. They were had left their first love, and they were were not like what they were before. And you and I have to be on guard against that ourselves as Christians, not to grow spiritually cold, or looking at people outside of the congr uh, the walls of this church and not see that there's a need out there for them. And we have that need here to give to them, to fulfill if we hand it to them. Salvation is very much needed around our life, our world here. Uh, we read this, but 2 Timothy 3, 5, he talked about having to have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They can go through the motions. You can go through the motions of singing, like there's no real worship in the singing sometimes. You, know, you just go through what the song leader calls for. Well, we sing in the sweet by and by, okay? And you're not really giving any thought what that means. Just what's the next song? Get it over with. The next one, get it over with. Instead of worship, true God honoring worship, preaching, preaching is it can be just tolerated, or you can say, "Well, I want to know what God's talking about. I want to know what He's saying. I want to know the truths." Decision that you make and I make. Uh, we've been in the last days. The church will be like the church in. Uh, well, my mind went blank. Ch chapter 3 of Revelation. Uh, they just, they had a, a service, but the Lord wasn't in it. He was on the outside, shut out, knocking on the door, saying, if, if any man will let me in, one, I'll come in and sup and have fellowship with that person, and me and my father. They have fellowship with me and my father. Jesus said in, Luke, in Revelation 3.15, I, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. In other words, he said, you're making me sick. Lukewarmness makes him feel like regurgitating. He doesn't like that. Either get with it or don't get with it at all. If you're totally cold, uh, you can do something with you or give it all you got. Be totally hot. The return of the Jews to Palestine. In 1947, they, they made a, uh, an agreement to let the Jews, I believe it was in May, to return back to their homeland. Never had happened in all those years, you know. And they're not all there yet. Uh, there's still a constant plea out to get them to come home. And some of them have even gone and come back, you know, go back to like here or some free country. But the Bible says that there, Jesus, God's going to gather them. Look at Isaiah 11 and verse 12. 
he said he had gathered them from all the four corners of the earth. In that verse 12, Isaiah 11, 12, he said, he, he shall set up an ensign for the nation and shall, shall assemble the outcast of, of Israel and gather together this dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Together the remnant he called his flock. And Jeremiah 33, 3 said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty signs which <coughs> thou knowest not. And I, I will bring again the captivity of my people, Amos 9, 14 of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. Did you know, uh, they call it the breadbasket of the world, but there's a, an area there that's, I think it's like 30 miles wide, I forgot how long, they said they can, the Israel, this is in Israel, they can feed the whole world in that little uh, land there. It's how fertile it is. It, you know, so God said he's going to bring them back and rebuild the different cities that had been torn down in the land and, and he would bless them that they would be able to grow gardens and eat fruit thereof and vineyards and have the wine thereof. They're there. And now they're waiting to get the, the gathering of all the rest of the Jews from all over the world. They brought a lot of them home from Russia, brought a lot home from Africa. A lot of them come from the United States, different countries, but there's still a lot to go. Uh, there was a boy in our congregation, he's my nephew, he's half Jew, last Sunday. His, his parents, their dog, they're full-blood Jews. They live in Houston. Those are, those are the kind that will, someday, their living will go back to Israel. They will want to go. God will work some way in them to want to go back home. And then also, last, and uh, what lies ahead is fear, real fear. Uh, man may think he's brave, but the Bible says in Luke 21, 25, he's, he'll show up. He'll, he's going to see things that's going to bring real fear out in him. He said, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and up on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, this sea and the wave roaring, men's hearts failing for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. It's not going to be a pretty place to be during especially the tribulation period when they see in all this. Uh, it says in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. In Revelation 6:16, 6, it said and talks about them wanting the mountains to fall on them, rocks fall on them. It said and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of Him that sitteth on the throne and from the Wrath of the Lamb. See, the wrath, uh, 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 we talked, I think I told you that I had a person tell me here before they left, I didn't preach enough on the love of God. But let me tell you something. I believe that if I know what to expect, that's a little bit of knowing what the love of God is. He wants me to know so I don't have to face those things. I said this morning, there's going to be people that's not going to be in heaven because God never knew them. He's not a liar. He can't say, I never knew you. If he knew you one time, he knows you forever. 
but there's going to be people that's going to reject the truth of God's word right down to the very end and wound up standing before the great white throne of God saying, but Lord, I went to Washington Straight Baptist Church. I hardly missed. I was baptized. Reeker baptized me. I, I did. I worked there. I, whatever. And he's going to have to say, I, depart from me, you worker, worker of any tree. I never knew you. Not because he knew you and they said, well, you didn't do enough work, but because you reject the only way to heaven, Jesus Christ. That would be the only reason. I hope no one ha happens to anyone I've ever preached to. I, at least my desire that they know Jesus Christ is a personal Savior if they don't know anything else then I will see them in heaven. Let's stand and we'll be dismissed. And